in this tutorial we're going to run through three different ways to create grain textures in After Effects. Each one does create a slightly different result so watch and learn all three and adapt them into your project however you see fit. We're going to start with the first technique which is the one you're seeing on the circle on the left. I already have a composition set up with our circle inside but this will work on any layer you like. It doesn't have to be a shape layer like you're seeing here. Same goes for all the other techniques as well. So this can be a JPEG, a PNG, a shape layer, anything you want in here. So what we're going to do is with our layer, we're just going to create a completely separate layer that covers our layer. So if you have a character or whatever it is, make sure this second shape covers that completely. It can even just be a solid, in fact, let's just use a solid. So let's go to layer, new, solid. Let's call this grain. And I'm just going to change the color to black. So this will be the color of our grain. So you can change this later, but I'm just gonna make that black for now. And then in our effects and presets, let's search for set matte and drag this onto our grain layer. And then the First drop down, let's select our circle one. And there we go, that is now covering our circle. And what we want to do is with our grain layer selected, we want to draw a circle. So up here in the shape tool, let's click and hold. So we make sure we have the ellipse tool selected. If rather than a solid, you're using a shape layer, make sure you have this ticked here. So rather than create a new shape layer, you are creating a mask, but on our grain, and let's just draw a circle where we want our grain to be. And that'll do there for now. And next to the mask here, I'm just going to invert that because we want the outside of this mask circle to be where the grain is. Let's just drag that about there. So that's gonna be our sort of grainy shadow. And in our blending mode here, we're just going to select Dancing Dissolve. Nothing would have happened yet. That is because we need to add a feather to our mask. So we can either drop down or press F. And let's really feather this out. There we go. Just a bit more maybe. Okay, that's not too bad. And it's as simple as that. So if you're not happy with the color, you can add a, add a fill, drag that onto the same layer, and you can change the color of your grain from here. But let's leave that black. If you play this through you will see that it animates and if you want it to be static as in not move rather than dance and dissolve just select dissolve and then when you play this through it will just be a static grain that's really as simple as that for technique one so let's move on to technique number two so again i already have this composition set up and a square this time but this can be whatever you want and all we're going to do is go to layer Layer styles, inner shadow. Where's inner shadow? Inner shadow. And let's go and find our inner shadow down here. Opacity, I'm just gonna bring that up to 100. And the distance, I'm just gonna bring up for now, just quite high. And then the angle, I'm just gonna change this until it's in that bottom corner, very similar to where we had it on the circle, which is in that bottom right. And now I'm just gonna up that distance again. There we go. And all we're going to do here is on this drop down in blend mode, go to dissolve. So not the blending mode for the layer. We want the blending mode under the inner shadow. We want this to be dissolve. And again, you'll see a bit of grain here, not too much. And that is because we need to add more feather, or in this case, it's called size, sort of softness. So let's bring this right up. And there we go, that's about right. And if you play this through, you will notice that it is completely static. There's no option to have this animating, which is a downside, so it will be completely static. But the upside of this technique, as you'll see with the square, is that it follows the shape of your layer. So if you have a if you have an intricate character or an intricate shape in any way, this shadow will follow the curvature and the lines of that shape. You don't have to draw it by hand like we did in technique one with the mask which you can manipulate slightly if you wanted to. If you wanted to change the shape of where that grain was, you can. But with Technique 2, whatever the shape of your layer is, it will follow it. So it has its upsides and downsides, this one. If you only want a static look and you don't want to have to worry about 
drawing the lines by hand, this is a good technique. But for now, let's move on to technique number three. Then here we have our triangle. And with this technique, we're going to do something very similar as we did with the first one. And that is create a solid or just a shape that covers our complete shape or layer. Call it grain again. Gonna leave that as black, click OK. And again, we want set mat, just like that first one. Bring this on and select our triangle one. And there we go. And again, we're going to draw a mask of where we want our shadow, our grain. Let's go with that. And again, invert, because we want the shadow on the bottom, not the top. And what we're going to do is in our effects and presets, search for roughen edges and bring this on. And we want our border to be very high. It's currently on eight. Let's bring this to 390 or 400. Let's go 390. And then we need to bring our scale down to 10 just so we can actually see that detail. There we go. So what's happening here is our set mat is happening first and then our roughen edges. We want it to happen in the other order. So it roughens the edges first and then does the set mat. So let's just drag that beneath. And there we go. Let's just bring that in a bit further. And there we go. So with this technique, it's very similar to the first one, but if I just flick through to that first one and zoom in a bit, you'll see that all these points, all these dots are very clear. There's not much blur going on. It's very on or off. With our technique free, if I zoom in, you'll see it's a bit more blur and it's a bit more natural. So let's zoom back out. If you play this, nothing happens because if we want this to animate, we need to animate the evolution. So we can either keyframe at the start and keyframe at the end and bring this up right up. So 50 needs to be quite high. There we go. Or what I like to do is if I just undo those, hold option or alt and click on the stopwatch just to bring up our expression box and then type in time times 5,000. So a big number here and click off and just play this through then there's no need for any keyframes. So if we were to extend our composition or shorten it in any way, we don't need to then adjust those keyframes. It will just automatically adjust to our composition length. So you can change this number to whatever you want. If you want it slower or faster, just make this number higher or lower. And that is all the free techniques for today. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.